Hello and welcome to this lesson on electrical circuit laws, which is part of the electricity topic in AQA A level physics. So in today's lesson, we're going to look at understanding what laws an electrical circuit obeys. So if we've been successful, we can state Kirchhoff's first and second circuit laws and use Kirchhoff's laws to solve problems with electrical circuits. So in today's lesson, we're going to look at the following part of the AQA A level physics specification, 3.5.1.4 circuits. Now we must consider the laws that all DC and low frequency AC circuits obey. Now these laws are the laws which all electrical circuits must obey and are the principle of modern electrical circuits. So in 1845 German physicist Gustav Kirchhoff described two laws and in electromagnetic fields these laws are generalizations of Ohm's law linking with the conservation of energy. So these Kirchhoff circuit laws are very useful when solving electrical circuit problems. So if we apply Kirchhoff rules to electrical circuits, we can then understand the quantities of different values in the electrical circuit. So Kirchhoff's first law is the law of charge conservation in an electrical circuit. So the first law states how charge is conserved in an electrical circuit. And this was shown in GCSE as in a series circuit, we were aware that current is the same throughout the circuit. So it's a fundamental rule of the universe that charge cannot be created or destroyed. And this was previously discussed in the particle physics module in the conservation laws. So Kirchhoff called this first law Kirchhoff's first law or Kirchhoff's junctions law. And this is the application of the physics principle that charge cannot be created nor destroyed in an electrical circuit. So our rigorous definition of this law is that the sum of the current into a junction equals the sum of a current out of a junction. And we can actually split this law into three different ideas in an electrical circuit. So the first part is that at any junction in a circuit, the total current leaving the junction is equal to the total current entering the junction. Now, a junction is defined as a place in an electrical circuit where the circuit has more than one path. So we can say that at a junction, the total current entering must equal the total current leaving. Now, just be aware, the current does not have to split equally at the junction. In fact, the current splits as an inverse of the resistance. So in DC circuits, current and resistance are inversely proportional. And it's important that you always remember this particular rule. This is because the greater the resistance, the more impedance there is to charge to flow in the conductor, so the lower the current. Now, if you consider the equation I equals V over R, for a constant value of V, we can say I is equal to K over R, where I and R are inversely proportional. Now, if the resistance is the same at each outgoing path, then the current splits equally. But if the resistance is double on one side of the path compared to the other, well, then the the current is half on that same path. If the resistance is triple on one path compared to the other path, well then the current is the third on that path. So to work out the current split, what you need to do is work out the proportion of the resistance found in each side and then use this to find the split. So you could work out the total resistance found afterwards. So for example, in this case, 10 ohms plus 30 ohms equals 40 ohms. Work out the proportion that each path takes. So path one is three quarters of the resistance and path two is one quarter of the resistance. And then to find the current in each path, you multiply the total current going into the junction by the missing proportion at each path. Now that's because it has to be the missing proportion because they're inversely related. The higher the resistance, the lower the current. Now to check your answer when you've worked this through, the total current before should equal the total current afterwards. And the higher the resistance, the lower the current. Now the second part of Kirchhoff's first law is that the current entering a component is the same as the current leaving the component. Components do not use up current, so if it was 10 amps before, it was 10 amps after. This is because we assume that all charge carriers pass through the device and no charge carriers are deposited into the device, and no charge carriers change speed. 
Now, the third part to Kirchhoff's first law is that the current passing through two or more components in series is the same through each component, that the rate of flow of charge through each component is the same at any instant. So again, we assume all charge carriers pass through a device, no charge carriers are deposited into a device, and no charge carriers change speed. So we assume that in a circuit wire line, there's no special place. The wire is completely uniform. So to clarify for Kirchhoff's first law, part one is that at any junction in a circuit, the total current leaving the junction is equal to the total current entering the junction. That the current entering a component is the same as the current leaving a component. Components do not use a current. And that the current passing through two or more components in series is the same through each component. The rate of flow of charge through each component is the same at any instant. Now we can also state Kirchhoff's first law in terms of measurable electrical quantities, in the sense that the current in a series circuit is the same all the way around that same series circuit loop, and that the current in a parallel circuit will split between paths as an inverse of the total resistances of each path. And this is demonstrated in the following diagram, because the same amount of charge passes through each component every second. The current reads the same. Now, Kirchhoff's second law considers the conservation of energy in an electrical circuit. So Kirchhoff's second law states how energy is conserved in an electrical circuit. And this was shown at GCSE because in a series circuit, the EMF into a circuit equals the PD out. So it's a fundamental rule of physics that the energy per charge going into the circuit must equal the energy per charge going out of the circuit. So this second law is known as Kirchhoff's voltage law or the closed circuit law or the loop law. So this second law is based on the physics principle of the conservation of energy. So in this law, the algebraic sum of the voltage or potential differences in any loop must equal zero, and this circuit is a closed circuit. So we can write this as EMF is equal to the total I times by R. So this means that in any complex circuit, we can, we can divide this into many different closed circuits. So to understand the second law in a bit more detail, what we can do is define some previously understood concepts in electrical circuits. So we can consider any source of EMF a potential rise in the circuit. So this is because energy is being placed into the circuit. So all of these components place energy into the circuit. They all cause the potential or energy in the circuit to rise. And we can consider any potential difference output a potential drop in the circuit because energy is leaving the circuit. So all of these components take energy out of the circuit. They all cause a potential or energy drop drop in the circuit. So in one closed electrical loop, there are potential rises and potential drops. And we consider one electrical loop as one closed system where energy cannot be created or destroyed. So we know that the total EMF in is equal to the total PD out. But the PDs, the potential differences, do not have to split equally. This only occurs when each device has, has the same resistance. So what we can actually do is we can actually link the um, potential difference to the resistance of the device. In fact, the two are directly proportional. So in DC circuits, the potential difference and the resistance are directly proportional. Now, it's always important to remember this rule. This is because the greater the potential difference, the greater the energy which passes through the component. So therefore, the greater the resistance it generates. So if we consider the equation V equals IR, then for a constant R, we can say V equals KR, where K is a constant of proportionality, so V and R are directly proportional. So the PDs across a device is directly proportional to the resistance of that device. So, for example, if one bulb had double the resistance of the next bulb, it would have double the potential difference across it. If one bulb had triple the resistance of the other bulb, it would have triple the potential difference across it. So to work out your potential difference split, you work out the proportion of the resistance found in each side, and then use this to find the split. So in this case, add up, the, add up the resistances to find the total resistance, 10 plus 30 equals 40 ohms. Find the proportion each bulb takes, so three quarters and one quarter. Then multiply each, uh, to multiply the EMF by the proportion of this one to find the PD of each output. So for bulb one, it's 12 times by a quarter, three quarters, which is nine volts. And for bulb two, it's 12 times by one quarter, three volts. Now this is because they're directly related. The higher the resistance, the higher the potential difference. 
So when doing your sums, you should check your answers by noting that the total EMF in is equal to the total PD out in one loop, and the higher the resistance of a device, the higher the potential difference. Now do remember that this is a DC circuit, not an AC circuit, which is why the laws are learned for PD and resistance in a transformer, which is a high frequency AC circuit, do not apply here. Now also please remember we can use this idea to apply Kirchhoff's second laws to three different contexts. So the first one is that for two or more components in a series, the total potential difference across the components is equal to the sum of the potential differences across each component. The potential rise equal the potential drop. Now please do remember we are assuming in these rules that there is no internal resistance present. Now this shows us that energy cannot be lost anywhere in the circuit except the output devices. Now the second part is that the potential difference across components in parallel is the same. So this shows that each loop can be considered to be a different closed system. The loops are supplied with identical amounts of energy from the EMF source. So we know that the more loops connected to an EMF source, the more the total energy supplied by that source. So this tells us that if the battery is an EMF source, if you had more loops in parallel, it would drain faster. Now the third part is that for any complete loop of a circuit, the sum of the EMF is equal to the sum of the potential drop around the loop. So the EMF of the circuit is divided into different potential differences, and we call this type of circuit a potential divider. So a potential divider is achieved if you have more than one PD output in an electrical output. And remember that the potential difference received by each output is directly proportional to the resistance of each device. The greater the resistance, the more the potential difference that they have. Now, it's finally important to note that, that you can work out your values of potential difference from the resistances of each device. So, with Kirchhoff's second law, if the charge carriers in a circuit lose energy, then the potential difference is a potential drop. If the charge carriers in the circuit gain energy, like when they pass through a battery, the potential difference is a potential rise equal to the potential difference across the battery, leading to three concepts. Part 1. For two or more components in series, the total potential difference across the components is equal to the sum of the potential differences across each component. Part 2. That the potential difference across the components in parallel is the same. And then finally, for any complete loop of a circuit, the sum of the EMF is equal to the sum of the potential differences across the loop. Now we can state Kirchhoff's second law in terms of measurable electrical quantities. So we can say that firstly, the potential difference out of a loop of a parallel circuit is equal to the EMF into that loop, and that the potential difference in a series circuit will split between the outputs of the series circuit in direct proportion to the resistances of the output. So to summarise what we've looked at in today's lesson, we understand the relationships between current, voltages and resistance in series and parallel circuits, including cells and identical cells in parallel, and we understand the conservation and of charge and the conservation of energy in DC circuits. So if we've been successful and we've learned in today's lesson, we can state Kirchhoff's first and second circuit laws and use Kirchhoff's laws to solve problems with electrical circuits. So thank you very much for watching today's lesson on electrical circuit laws, which is part of the electricity topic in AQAA level physics. Thank you very much for watching and have a lovely day.